This is the quest within. Welcome to The Quest Within. My name is Theology, and uh, Nathan is going to be sitting this episode out, but I have two of my favorite people in the whole world right now. We've got AJ Schmollenberger and Jason Patterson. Uh, Patterson goes by, well, you, you tell them who you are. Yeah, I go by Xenos when I'm just kind of expressing music in a DJ sense, uh, just spinning for fun. Um, and I go by Diamond Xenos for anything I produce. Um, two different dynamics, but yeah, good stuff. Awesome. And then AJ, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm AJ Schmollenberger. I'm uh, not a music producer, but I uh, do some various projects with uh, Theology and Zenos. We're uh, doing some uh, dance nights in the cities, but... Uh, I'm also a tech guy. I work in IT consulting, but uh, I also have like 8 million other projects that I work on. Yeah, you're a busy guy. You are kind of like the kingpin in a way. <laughs> uh, I met, okay, so I met these guys both through the convention scene, and we were at Anime Detour having a pretty deep discussion over some food and drinks. And we realized, why don't we just like do this more often? So we try to get together at least once a month to just talk about deep things because that really matters a lot in life. So the first time we got together was at Five Lock Coffee and it was super great. And uh, I was like, why don't we just like record the next time we do this? So yeah, uh, enough introductions and we're going to get into it. So I just did a show at VGMCon. It was absolutely incredible, probably the best show of my entire life. And afterwards, I had the worst post-con depression I've ever had, ever. It was bad. I also simultaneously got sick. A lot of dumb things happened with like expenses popping up in life. And yeah, it, it sunk me into this like weird mini depression. And to get over that subconsciously, and I didn't even realize I was doing this, I was just constantly overstimulating myself, always like listening to a YouTube video. Like I was putting my phone like in a cup holder in the shower so I could like be listening to YouTube videos like in the shower. Okay. Then I stumbled upon this video of this French YouTuber and she was talking about the right to quiet enjoyment, which I like, I don't know when I heard that phrase, it absolutely blew my mind because in the past I have tried to do like meditation and such, and it's always felt very performative to me and it's never really worked out. I've always like tried to get into it and then it has just gone downhill and I haven't been able to continue. Right. But with this, the right to quiet enjoyment, something just clicked in my head and I was like, oh my gosh, I am overstimulating myself like crazy. Uh, so I went outside, I stared at a tree for an hour. <laughs> I did some journaling um, and I did some breathing exercises and it felt amazing. And I realized that what I was doing there was kind of like meditation, right? But it just wasn't performative meditation. And so that really helps me. It snapped me out of whatever I was going through and it's been smooth sailing ever since. But I don't know. I kind of just want to hear your thoughts on the right to quiet enjoyment. Like, what do you guys do in your life to get that? Well, can you maybe start by telling us what the right to quiet enjoyment means to you? Yeah, sure. So the right to quiet enjoyment is this weird concept that's used primarily only in private property law. <laughs> so it's like one of the main reasons people buy houses, right, is so that they can just check out. It's quiet and they can just kind of sit there, right? Now, we live in a world that is so overstimulated all the time. Everyone is posting content all the time, right? There's definitely main character syndrome that goes around. And, you know, I'm guilty of it too, right? Like, I'm posting all the time for my music stuff. But the thing is, we are so overstimulated and there's this concept of hyperattention that I think it's, it's killing us. Like the attention economy is absolutely killing us. That was actually the name of that uh, French YouTuber's video was the attention economy is killing us. And when we're, when we're focused so much on content and media and we're always consuming that all of the time, we never really have an opportunity to sit with ourselves 
and just kind of do nothing and just be with ourselves, right? And I feel like a lot of people are scared of that concept because, yeah, it can be tough like to just like, oh, let's just stare at a wall. Let's stare at a wall for 30 minutes and see what happens, right? Yeah, so the right to quiet enjoyment for me is just that whole like, let's get away from the hyper-attention economy that these tech giants have created, right? And let's sit with ourselves and be with ourselves and be comfortable with that no matter what comes up. So. You know, it's kind of funny that you say that because I think there's a lot of uh, like tech startups right now that are like really focusing on that like meditation space. Like even Apple has like a freaking meditation app on their Apple Watch, right? And yeah, that's right. They do. It hasn't come up in a while. I was like, wait, they do? Yeah, yeah, they do. Totally so I think do. they like 100% realize the monster that they've created, right? Where we have these very short attention span things where people are getting, you know, afraid to be with their own thoughts. It's kind of funny because I weirdly started doing meditation when I was 14, I think. I was, uh, <laughs> This is a weird story. So um, there was this uh, trip I went on for Boy Scouts where we were going to the World Scout Jamboree in Thailand. And What haven't you done, AJ? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyways. So, so it was this camping trip in Thailand, and uh, part of the, the trip, we went to this Buddhist monastery out in the middle of nowhere, and this uh, Buddhist monk taught us like did this like two hour meditation session and i've always dealt with uh, like anxiety problems and you know i'm super adhd and Big yeah and uh, it was the first time i'd really ever been taught about the concept of you know just sitting there and clearing my mind and and I don't think, like you said, like it doesn't have to be like a um type of like, a, like you know. Uh, but I think it's like important for us to like actively process our thoughts. And I think that what happens when we don't is that all this stuff gets built up, right? And we kind of like push it down to a subconscious level until we get anxiety, depression issues, stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not saying that meditation cures mental illness, but it uh, for sure uh, doesn't hurt to, like, process, you know, your emotions, your thoughts, your, you know, what's going on in your life. And I have always kind of been, uh, you guys might not believe me on this, but I've always been kind of like a loner, uh, Interesting, yeah. Yeah, 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 we were both just yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. for real. Uh, <laughs> I believe most things you say, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like, this concept seems is weird to people because they see me out when I'm social, right? Mm -hmm. But I've worked remotely for over a decade. Uh, and when I'm not out and about, I'm usually at home by myself. Yep. Uh, even when I have roommates, I tend to... Um, have enjoy like my alone time right i like lock myself in my bedroom and i read books and i think about things i meditate every night before i go to bed and i spend probably about 80 percent of my time by myself and i think that it's one of those things that i've always really 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 enjoyed having that time to myself so that I'm recharged. I'm mentally yeah. ready for when I want to talk to people when I want to interact with people so I can be the person I want to be around others, you know? Right. And and I try to bring, you know, that energy. Um, I try to be, you know, I don't want to say, like, I'm a different person, but, I, like, I'm a, I'm a different version of myself yeah. when I'm alone doing that quiet, contemplative you know, existence versus like for my job, I'm very much like on camera a lot. I'm very much, I, I do a lot of webinars. I do a lot of public speaking engagements. I do a lot of uh, video meetings, Zoom meetings, stuff like that. And then in my personal life, I do a lot of like 
going to EDM shows. I do a lot of going to conventions where I'm a lot around a lot of people a lot. And there's a different version of me that you see there versus like uh, the version of me that like sits at home and like reads a book and, you know, nerds out in my own head about like these cool little like projects that I want to do. And it, it actually becomes like the impetus a lot of projects that I end up actually working on with others, right? Because I think about scenarios. I think about what my path in life is going to be. And it, it's actually served me very well for like career-wise and like uh, like doing projects that I want to do and stuff. Because I think things out a lot, mm-hmm. right? And and I, I have like 8 million different ideas and I, I when I get one to a state that I like think is ready for like someone else to bring in all like I have some close confidants and I have family members and stuff and I'm like hey what do you think about this idea where we uh we build like a a giant commune in the middle of nowhere and like you know stuff or what do you think about like this website idea that like gives a marketplace for people in the news to like write articles and then you can like subscribe to uh different content creators or have like a uh, a like a credit system or you like you pay like a monthly subscription to like a newspaper right and then like you can get whatever articles based off of how many credits you have it's like one of the things one of my best friends works in news journalism and we've been trying to think about like how can we get the advertising money out of news because it's kind of corrupting the intention of uh, reporting things in a neutral fashion reporting facts totally. we had a lot of editorialization and stuff like that and this is a weird tangent but uh, t- take it we've got nothing but time yeah you know i got i this is like when i have that like quiet time to myself that's when i think about these things and i think that without that kind of intentional like time to think be alone with my thoughts i wouldn't get nearly as far on any of these ideas and you know for every good idea i have i have a hundred bad ones (laughs) and um you know i don't think any of them would get close to uh becoming a thing if i didn't have that time to like think through i you know like i find it when i'm working i i my work life i think through client problems i so my title at work is enterprise solution architect right my entire job is to think through complex like processes and systems and come up with like improvements or solutions on it so we're talking about like literally thousands of different variables from like hundreds of people uh how do we incept something how do we create an idea of what we're going to do how do we judge if that's going to be of business value for the business how do we understand if that's going to bring customer value and like there's all these different data points that you have in these systems and uh it's you know different people do that job in different ways a lot of people like to like draw things out i'm a terrible drawer so i I hate that yeah um a lot of people uh will like make spreadsheets and i hate spreadsheets so i'm not going to do that uh, so what I tend to do is just kind of visualize it all in my head when I have some of these quiet times and I just kind of think through the processes. And then when I find something that I'm like, Hey, maybe there's something here. Uh, that's when I'll like start diagramming and stuff like that. So I don't know. I just think that a lot of people don't take the time to just think about things. Yeah. Thinking requires effort and it's, it's work. Right. And you know, in our society, I don't blame a lot of people for not because they're overworked. They don't have time to do anything. And when they get home, yeah, they want to watch a bunch of fast food TikToks, right? Like, because that's all they have the energy for, right? So I I do understand that to a certain extent. But a point I wanted to make is that, you know how like when you go on a, like a bender and you drink way too much for a long time and then your tolerance goes way up and then it'll take like eight drinks to even feel something. Yeah, (laughs) kind of the same thing with overconsumption of media. If you think about it, when you are overconsuming media all of the time, you build a tolerance with your dopamine, right? And that's why when I just 
was outside staring at a tree doing nothing and self-reflecting about everything going on in my life it was a reset right of the dopamine centers i i firmly believe and that's why it snapped me out of that yeah something that i i've learned to like set a boundary to make sure i get that reset um yeah like one something i had a little while ago about a year ago actually like probably the, one of the worst con drops I've ever had. Like I go to a con, it's great, it's amazing. I get to be around my friends. I get to be around my friends. I get to have a good, uh, good party time. Music, obviously. Um, but then I, when the con drop happens, it's like, oh, I come back to my home and all that, all that's gone. And I'm, I'm chasing it. I want more, but I wouldn't. I wasn't giving myself time to be alone again. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, cool, that was fun. And like, I learned about myself saying, hey, I need to pause and I need to take a step back and just be like, you know what? I, I love my alone time because when I was growing up, I didn't really have a choice but to have alone time. What do you mean? Talk more about that. Uh, I grew up in a, um, well, I went to a private Christian school growing up, um, but like everybody was spread out. There wasn't like a bus system or anything. So like the kids that I was close with, uh, they actually lived about a good 30 minutes away. So there wasn't any like, oh, I'm going to ride my bike to someplace. And any kids in the area went to a different school. So I didn't connect with them on stuff. Uh, so I was consistently alone. Uh, growing up, I kind of, I don't even know if it would be considered like a forced, uh, like enjoying something on my own because I would be on the bus listening to music, like Jet Set Radio soundtrack and yes. everything. <laughs> Ahideki Naganuma, good stuff. Um, and I would listen to it and I couldn't share it with anyone because it was always considered just weird or anything. But I was like, okay, well, I'll just enjoy it on my own. <laughs> but Bro, we have so much in common. Hold that thought, please, because I want you to continue. But I also went to a private Christian school where a lot of my friends were scattered. And I listened to video game music that like we pirated off of Kazaa, right? Yeah. And I was listening to it on a Walkman, bro, because uh, we didn't have a CD player. So I had to like put the CD into like a boom box and then record it to a tape so I could listen. Yeah. So same and same thing. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, continue. Yeah. And it was it was things like that. But I learned like. I learned, but I was kind of like, I didn't have any option to like, Hey, I enjoy this, but I can enjoy it with other people. So it was just, I enjoy this and that's it. So, uh, if I, I don't know, it's, it's, I guess it's one of those levels where it's like, if I'm going to enjoy something, I've learned to like, take it in on my own at my own pace. Yeah. Same with like games, like. I know when some people get a new game comes out, even I get the game, people are like, cool, I beat it within like the first week and a half. And I'm like, yo, I'm just leisurely strolling yeah. through this. <laughs> I wish I had time for that. I'll give you an example. I bought this bad boy at Costco for $30. And you, yeah, and you can't see, but I'm holding up, yeah, a copy of Tears of the Kingdom. I haven't played it yet. I bought this maybe five months ago. Oh, yeah. That yeah. That literally, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but like that's how it goes. Like with um like quiet enjoyment, like I've like even for alone time, you learn to set your own boundaries to say like like and if that's the way it is, like after con this year, I was like I had to tell people, hey, not hanging out with anybody for a while. I'm not I'm not going to a party or anything because I just need to calm down and I just need my own mind to have that stillness yeah. for a little bit. Do you, do you also get the issue where uh like people like enjoy your company certainly, uh and then they, they like try to like push those boundaries yeah. a lot? They're like, oh, well, come to this thing. And you're like, no, I'm good. And they're like, no, you should really come. We really want you to go. And I'm like, no, I, I already said no. Yeah. Exactly. And that's like, like, and there's been an issue recently with somebody in my life that was like, I'll set my foot down and say no. And then like, you know, I really, they keep bringing it up. Yeah. And it's like, cool. <laughs> I hear what you want, but I'm, yeah. I'm setting my boundary and being affirmative and stating that. I'm not going to be able to provide that for you. I maybe I might apologize about it because it's like, hey, I wish, but I'm also not going to. I've been the victim of uh, my, me to myself pushing myself to 
be kind, not kind, but like doing something that other people want that I'm not okay with. And that's something that I'm like, you know what? I've beat myself up enough about that. I need to not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's this very interesting dynamic that goes on. Um, I don't want to call it like codependency, but like people will push their own boundaries because they're afraid if they say no, people will like cut them off. And oh, yeah. yeah, like I, I, I don't get what that is, but maybe because I've always been, like I said, kind of a loner. And if somebody is like, I don't want to be your friend because you don't hang out when I want to hang out. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> do your journey, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. I can admit that that's something that I've had, that I've dealt with recently because like parties, People will, like, you'll get invited to a party, and I'm like, oh, man, I guess I got to make an appearance because I was invited. And then, even though it might clash with some plans, yeah, if I don't go, I may not get invited again. Yeah. So. No, that's totally a thing, right? And uh, that's part, maybe part of the reason why I started hosting events myself, because, like, people like coming to those events, and I, I get to determine when it is and stuff like that, and people get to see me and stuff like that. It's, like, my home territory versus, like, going to other people's events and stuff like that. And it's, I don't know, it's, it, I don't have, like, a solution for it, but, like, I think that, like, people just have to have respect for other people's, like, spoons, you know? like Totally. It goes both ways, man. Yeah, and... Like, Whenever I invite somebody to one of my shows, if they can't make it, I say, great, I hope you have an awesome, safe night. Like, I'm not going to pressure somebody into coming, right? And so, yeah, it should definitely 100% go both ways. I agree. I was actually just talking to a friend last night, and they were very concerned about how they hadn't been around much uh, lately, hanging out because they've been going through some stuff. And I was like, hey, like... There's no friendship decay here. Like right. when when you're ready to come hang out, we're we're ready and you know wanting to hang out with you. But like, don't think that we're gonna think less of you just because you're taking time to focus on yourself. Like I like that terminology, friendship decay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's really good. Um, no, I totally agree. Um, I guess the moral of the story is that we should respect boundaries. <laughs> consent is king right like respect boundaries and if somebody is in you know a, a season of their life like that where they need to withdraw for a little bit like definitely support them in any way you can i mean because oh yeah go ahead i think there's like a, a fine line that you have to walk right like there's you want to respect people's boundaries but you like you also don't want to stop trying to include them yes exactly yeah because when you stop doing that, that's when those friendships fall apart, right? right? And and somebody might be going through something, might be having some hard times, or might just need to recharge their batteries a bit. But, like, don't stop trying to include them in things. Yeah. But just be respectful if they say no, right? And uh, I think that's, like, the line I try to walk as I, tr you know... Like, this is why I'm in, like, 80 million group chats, yeah. <laughs> right? Where I just, yep. like, most of the time I ignore 90% of what's going on in them, and then I'll just show up and be like, hey, what's going on tonight? Like, what are we doing? For real, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, imagine if you did keep up with all of those all of the time. That would be overconsumption in itself, and that would be a full-time job. Yeah, so there's a group chat we're all in, right? That uh, the person who started it was like, I'm going to add you to this group chat. First thing you need to do mute it yeah <laughs> i was like okay yeah <laughs> my phone got on that because i actually left that group chat in like last year july <laughs> and then the person who started it added me back when we had brunch and my phone immediately muted remuted it. <laughs> it i didn't even have to go in i was like oh we know we got it, you it knows it knows it's like there's yeah. What, like 50 people in that group chat? Probably. No, it's 108. 108? Oh my gosh. I love how you know the specific number. Oh, I just looked at it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like two days ago, which and, is probably more now because events yeah. just happened. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think I know most of the people in that group chat. There's definitely some I've never met, have no idea who they are. But it's funny because I've met a lot of people through that whole interface. But it's just, it's fun to like, sometimes you want to talk to people and you're like hey let's post memes and totally. talk and some days i'll just be like hmm, I, I don't need to look at this right 
And it's just about respecting people where they're at. No, I like it. Yeah, there's a group chat I'm in. <laughs> But I've been in there for like five years. I make, I pop up once every like year and a half, and they're like, Jason's still in this? Like, what? <laughs> like, and they see me more often than I'm ever in that group chat. Yeah. I, I'm in a group chat with uh, a bunch of people I used to live in San Francisco with, and literally none of us post in this group chat, but like a couple times a year. And it's so funny because like somebody will post something and everyone will get in and be like, hey, yo, like, you know, like just like we'll interact for a while and then like we won't talk to each other again for like <laughs> six months. That's hilarious. I, I love those kinds of group chats. There is this concept that relates to this firmly. I saw this meme as I was uh, scrolling one time or no, I think somebody sent it to me. It was like not verbatim, but, you know, back in like the 90s, when we went out of the house, we were out, right? No one could get a hold of us. And if we saw somebody we knew, great, right? But if we, you know, didn't, we just had our day, right? And then we would get home and there would be a voicemail box that we had to check, right? And then we would get back to people when we could. There is this expectation in today's society which relates again to hyperattention and overconsumption where we're supposed to just always be available to respond. And I don't think that's healthy either. I had, uh, I have an ex-wife that, um, like I'd be out doing something. Uh, they'd know where I was, you know, I'd communicated ahead of time and everything. And then like, if they couldn't get a hold of me for like 10 minutes while I was at that thing, it became an issue, right? And ultimately, like, that was one of the many reasons why that relationship didn't work out. Still love them dearly, just wasn't a great fit for yeah. a marriage, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, that expectation that we should always be available and always be, you know, like, reachable, like, what? Eh, it's you. Right. Right? Like, asynchronous communication shouldn't expect it to be synchronous, right? D can you define that a little yeah, clearer? So asynchronous yeah, asynchronous yeah. communication is like, if I text you, right, there shouldn't be an expectation that you are going to synchronously, like at the same time, text me back. I'm, sure. I'm fundamentally sending you a message so that you can respond when you have the time and spoons available, right? Mm -hmm. And people will be like, oh, I, he hasn't texted me back in like two days. Like, well, cool. If it was like an urgent matter, give, give me a phone call, yeah. you know, yeah. or text again. Or yeah. Well, yeah. Or follow up or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so there's this concept, uh, in like chat in like corporate world. Uh, so like Slack teams, those things, right. Called no hello. No hello is where you're using an asynchronous method of reaching out. Like if you were sending an email, to someone you wouldn't just send an email that says hello mm -hmm. right that's very true yeah. yeah yeah and the chat platform is really no difference it's also an asynchronous communication platform like email is and the expectation should be that you reach out say what you're going to say and the person when they're available can then respond in kind and then if you get you know time to like schedule something more synchronous like a meeting, yeah. you then work through the details of that, right? But, like, if you just ch text someone or, like, chat them at work or something, just like, hi. Oh. That's not, yeah, that's not a good use of that communication platform. And I'm at the same way. I work in finance. Sometimes I get a, uh, a Teams message, mm -hmm. and it's like, hello, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. I don't know like what this is. We just had a meeting about fishing. Like <laughs> you're not working with me. Here. Dude, the only person I ever communicate that way to is my wife. That's it. She's the only person I will ever be like, hi. Well, and, and that's it, right? That's, like <laughs> that's also probably different in that like so, like my partner, I I often just like text them, good morning. Right. You know? Yeah. And I'm just, just like, hey, I'm thinking of you. That's like a different kind of relationship. Yes. I doubt Jim Bob at work is just like, hey, <laughs> thinking of you, wink, you know, like. <laughs> From all of us in accounting. <laughs> <laughs>
That's amazing. Yeah. So I don't know. That really spoke to me of like, because I'm getting to a point where answering messages is becoming like a full-time job and I have to be very specific about how I use my energy there. So you should get one of those AI assistants. <laughs> we'll see. That's the thing. It's like, what if I did and the AI assistant said something that was not in my wheelhouse whatsoever? I would be horrified. And that's, that's all I can think yeah, about. <laughs> no, I was, I was just joking because of our conversations yeah, know, on AI, but, uh, I, I actually think that, so I set up like chat bots on the reg for, um, like IT teams. And uh, AI is really going to help a lot of teams be able to like respond more to uh, that kind of stuff. And it, it's, I think, the one of the things that'll probably relieve a lot of overstressed IT workers that are like getting terrible things. But I, I think that concept in like my personal life would be hilarious. Like, I know. hi, you reached the AJ Schmollenberger chatbot. If you're trying to uh, schedule time to hang out, please press one. If you're trying to uh, <laughs> see if they're going to be at a function that you're going to, please press two. You I know, something love like that. that so much. Oh my gosh. That's so like I thought of like at least six people that would jump right on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to schedule a time to come over and watch a movie? Please press three. <laughs> I would. No. Uh, I said. Yeah, dude. No, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly like really though, like struggling with that threshold, like where the line is in, you know, what's urgent and what's not. And cause you know, like I have a mental health focus in what I do and I want to be more available than not if somebody's going through something and they need advice or whatever. Right. And you know, it's, you know, I'm not like a professional like psychiatrist or anything. So like, you know, take my advice with a grain of salt, but I love giving advice. I love trying to encourage and help people and lift people up. And I want to be available for that because it's really like close to my heart. That's like where it's at. But I don't know, there is a certain point where it's just going to be impossible and there's no way I'm going to be able to do it. So I don't know. I'm kind of scared of that, to be honest. Yeah, you only have so many spoons, right? Yep. And there's a little bit of that, like, it's difficult to help others if you're not helping yourself. Right. You know, looking out for yourself. And that's, that's a, so that's kind of a big reason why I was like, hey, I'm taking time off. I'm not talking with people. I'm not hanging out. Like, even and like, kind of with the whole ADHD thing, like, it's a little bit of like, well, how do you decompress? Whether it's after a con, after work, or anything like that. Like, I'll play a game. I'll play a game that's like a turtling game, like an RTS that you just take your sweet time with mm -hmm. while I'm like mixing some stuff on my decks, just because like like I like I probably have like 5,000 hours in Northgard just because it's just running Jason yeah. I have a question for you what's up do you have ADHD <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll yeah, never know it's like a classic ADHD thing <laughs> where yeah, we're absolutely. like overstimulate ourselves to like yeah. focus on something I feel like it's almost like a Ba I need a baseline because at work for my job, I just go up to my desk or if I'm working from home today, I just roll out of bed, log into my computer and beep, boop, boop, beep. That's it. That's my whole job. I don't half the time. I don't talk to people. I don't yeah. interact with any other, but, uh, other individuals. So I usually have something else go on. Like I watch some dimension 20 or like uh rewatch an anime that like I've been doing Gundam wing lately, <laughs> but like, I'll just have that go on at the same time because even though, yes, I'm consistently moving my hands and processing something in my head regarding my job, it's not enough. Yeah. I need, like, my mind is just like, I'm bored. Obviously. I'm beyond bored. So I need something else. So, um, but like different activities give me spoons back. Same with different people sure, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's different for everybody. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like sometimes I can hang with someone and they'll be like, yeah, I'm just going to chill on your couch and just read a book. Mm -hmm. And like their energy just, life. yeah, they're just like, I'm like, cool, it's good. And then I'm, I'm playing my computer games. They're reading the book or playing their switch or whatever be the case. And I'm getting energy. Like I'm feeling rejuvenated just from that presence. Yeah. Did you know that parallel play is also a neurodivergent thing? 
what isn't yeah. <laughs> I feel in my life yeah. what isn't yeah, apparently like, no there's lots of things but yeah apparently like normal people don't do that yeah uh parallel play yeah. so that's like when you are in the same room as someone else doing completely separate things and you're just like enjoying yeah. each other's company but like not actually interacting yeah my wife and i do that like every day yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. great i love it i love it it's like you don't have to dedicate your entire energy to entertain the person yes yeah. just being around them is the, the vibe yeah yeah me and my my partner caitlin we often like when we hang out we'll like i'll read a book and they'll they've been doing these like lying drawing things lately uh or like just yeah, doing. Compl- I'll play video games and they'll yeah. read a book. You know, like yeah, my wife yeah. Said, yeah. And it, it's 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 a nice way to like spend time together without like spending any spoons on like interacting with each other. Yeah. And well, and like uh, Jason was saying, that gives me spoons back. Yeah. And there's certain people that I can be around where it does like this right now. I am so reju like I can feel my meter filling. Yeah, so like, no, certain things do, but then there's certain times where I'm around certain people and I can feel an energy shift and I know that it's draining me. And it's funny because I can typically feel this little soreness in like the back of my tongue. What It's weird. When I was online dating, like serially online dating before I met my wife, I I knew instantly if that was happening to me during the date that I didn't want to see the person again. Your gut feeling was the back of the tongue. Yeah, crazy. But I do get a gut feeling as well. But it, it was super weird. Like it's the back of the tongue. It, like I don't know. I don't know if I'm. I, I'm the only one I've heard of that that happens to. But it does. And thankfully, it's not happening right now. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. If you were like, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, oh, it's man. time to go. <laughs> The theology's getting beat. <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll see. We'll know the signs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's too funny. yeah. I always find it interesting that, like, I said, like, you can, like, parallel play. But, like, even if you're doing that, the exact same interaction with a different person may not rejuvenate you. Yeah. Like, right. like and it's, it's not a. It, you have, but you have to be honest with yourself about it. You can't just say, "Oh yeah, it's all fine." It's like, no, like, hey, just if it's not all fine, cool, address it, figure something out. Right. If it vibes, it vibes. It doesn't, okay. Like, yeah, it's man. not the worst thing in the world. But it's right. Like, not everybody's energies mesh, right? And that's okay. That is completely fine. I uh, I had to, I said this thing to someone the other day where I was like, you know, not everyone has to be my best friend you know yeah and that and that's okay right and for me i say um, like for my music right like oh yeah i guess you're not my audience that's fine that's okay go listen to something else yeah you know, like whatever. music's <laughs> such a like a subjective thing yeah and, like mm-hmm. i like i don't make music for other people's consumption it's one of my projects i do just for my own sake because it's fun and I don't need to share that with anyone because it's not for them. It's for me. Yeah. You know, it's like the kitchen sink uh, with 21 pilots. So let's see that little tattoo there. The few, the proud, the emotional, that little like part of the drawing. Sorry, no one can see this on the podcast, but <laughs> um, he has talked about that. Uh, the lead singer um, has talked about that being something that, he only knows what it's about and he's never going to tell anybody. And he says that you should always have something in your life. That's like that, that you just keep to yourself and yeah. And you making music is for you. And I love that. Like, I know, I know a few people like you who just like make it for themselves and that's good enough. Right. Whereas for me, I have to put, I have to share it with the world. Cause yeah, that's just the way I'm wired. But, but you also do have something for you. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. I um, I think that it's super interesting that like there's things that I absolutely want and need to share with other people, and there's other things that I absolutely do not want or need to share with other people, yeah. Yeah. and like like the things that I love sharing with people are like things in my like work world where I do a lot of like webinars and stuff because i'm really just super jacked to like talk about 
processes. <laughs> like, it seems so dumb, but I'm just like... He doesn't like Excel sheets, but he likes processes. <laughs> I love processes. It's so good. I love that for you. It, yeah, it, and it's not like, really it, yeah, it's not like something for everyone, right? For sure, like, if somebody isn't wanting to talk about process stuff with me, I'm like, cool, you know, that's yeah, not yeah. your thing. But, like, if you want to talk about processes and how we can make things more efficient, I will... 100 percent like dive into that with yeah, you totally. i love it like that's and i think that's something that like why i like vibe off of like every time like i'm around any of you both of you is the higher pressure <laughs> but like like you have your passions and you you don't shy from it mm -hmm. like the second you're like hey i'm into this you you do that and i don't feel a lot of people really do that unless they feel it's the norm oh yeah and yeah, i'm like weird. yeah like um well oh, yeah. sorry oh no i mean, well, i was just gonna say uh, a friend of ours um wasn't really expressing every type of music genre he he loved and we were doing a little past the ox type of bit and i put on um maximum the hormone which is like a i want to say like a hardcore like punk metal band in japan and it was an older video and they were like that was sick and i was like yeah yeah just metal and he was like i really like metal i just never been to a show i'm like dude let's go to a show oh, yeah. done like that and and uh he's like dude, like are you serious i'm like yeah but you and you don't have to commit to the pit but <laughs> if you do let me know because we'll do it <laughs> and should at least be pit adjacent i mean come on <laughs> i will like I, you learn stuff as you go but the thing is like like he was like not expressing how enthusiastic he loved all these other metal bands because with the crew we rode with so like he was like yeah i don't feel like that's normal and i'm like mm -hmm. i mean if you want do you want to express it? he's like yes i'm like cool i i'm not i can't speak on them but these folks are your friends. They're going to love you either way. Yeah. And he started expressing it, and they're like, dude, that's dope. And if somebody judges you for, like, liking something that they don't like, uh, they're kind of an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Like, remember that? It was, like, years ago. Taylor Swift was wearing, like, a Metallica shirt outside yeah. of a shopping, and people were like, she's both. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you don't know what she listens to. <laughs> like, yeah, there's a... Yeah, there's a um artist that makes extreme minimal techno and she on her like cover photo for like Beatport, she had a KMFDM shirt which is like industrial yeah. rock, right? And I love KMFDM. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like all about it. And I'm like, just because you make a certain genre of music doesn't mean you don't enjoy something else. Yeah, yep. <laughs> like and and I feel this way about sports, right? This is a, a topic that comes up a lot because I'm like the only non-sports fan in my family. Ooh, oh, okay. I'm a no, I'm the non-sports fan of all my friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. Yeah, and, and like my my best friend of like since eighth grade, right? Uh, he is literally a sports reporter, right? And wow. yeah, and and I'm like, yeah, that's I I love that for you, you know, like. I, I'm not going to be like, oh, sports are dumb, you know, and I think a lot of non-sports fans are like, oh, that's so dumb, I don't understand. It's like, rah, rah. I'm like, no, like, they get something out of it. Like, why does it matter? And that's not to say that there's not things wrong with, like, sports in our country, but um, there's problems uh, there for sure, like uh, taking advantage of college athletes and stuff like that. Yeah, but That's a huge one. That's not to say that, like, I think that people who enjoy that aspect of their lives are are wrong. I don't think any less of them. I, I think I, another good example is country music, right? Like, I know so many people who are like, oh, country music is awful. Like, it's so bad. If you listen to country music, you're just an idiot or stuff like that. I'm like, why? Like, yeah. Just because it's not your jam, but that's cool. like, like the best answer. I yeah, just saw. yeah. <laughs> that's. I feel like that's almost like the biggest genre that people do. Like that's one of the genres I just don't vibe with, right? Yeah. But I don't dislike it. Like I know exactly what sound makes it so I'm 
not it's not my thing mm -hmm. but like if i tear it apart and break down and put like the lyrics on a sheet and don't know it's a country music i'm like oh that's a decent song if i like just listen to like just take a single part of it or whatever and just use like if we stem broke it down yeah. like <laughs> i would and i just use the stems of this and this and this i'm like oh that's good but like there's something else that makes it like oh that's not really my vibe yeah. but like if people give it so give all these different things that they're not into so much crap it's like yeah. no man like it's just not your thing yeah like are, is it harming anyone yeah yeah exactly if it is then and and yeah. and there are like yeah, yeah. there are i would say probably problematic elements to a lot of things because life is gray yeah yeah and i think that you can you can respect other people's likes and dislikes and still acknowledge that they're problematic elements to a thing i would say arguably like one of the problematic elements of edm is kind of irresponsible drug use that happens in the scene right and that's not to say i judge anyone who does drugs that would be incredibly hypocritical of me <laughs> but uh but there's also like a level of like self policing that you have to do that a lot of people don't do uh and like addiction is a thing and like i i've i've seen a lot of people go down to dark paths where they've become addicted because they got into a scene and the norm was you know we're gonna do molly or we're gonna do coke or we're gonna do you know whatever and that and that's fine like if you're not hurting yourself go for it and a lot of people would say any drug use is you know problematic drug use i would argue differently but like you have to be aware that that is an element in the edm scene that is problematic right and there's a lot of people that hurt themselves because of it right do I dislike EDM because of it? No, I love EDM. It's it's my favorite genre of music, which is a weird thing to say because it's such a massive genre. It's but OG, yeah. So rock, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But I I would say that like consistently, that I could say that that problem is a problem within the entire community. Country music. Yeah. One of the things that I find problematic with that domain is some of the right-wing politics that gets mixed into that right yeah metal there's a hundred percent a problem with like neo-nazis in the metal scene right like there are problematic elements to everything because like you said everything is gray but just because there are problematic elements doesn't mean that there's not also uh super good elements yeah and beneficial elements and because you know, we are people that are diverse and like like a multitude of things and have many aspects to our lives. Like we can like different things, respect people for our differences and connect on where we have similarities. I agree. Yeah. Like back to the sports issue. Like, yeah, I couldn't care less about a bunch of millionaires throwing a ball around for a living. But like I'm watching Friday Night Lights right now and it's an amazing show because it goes into like the stories behind people's lives within the discipline of sports and i don't know like parts in that show have definitely made me cry given me goosebumps like there have been some really cool uplifting things right so yeah it's not all yeah you can't make blanket statements for anything man like yeah well and like i played sports my entire life growing up right and i played at like a collegiate level uh so like a higher level than a lot of people uh ever play in their lives and I I don't care to watch sports at all, and yeah. and that and that's fine because there's different elements to playing sports and watching sports. But like I also get and respect like the level of dedication that has to go into it, yes. like the amount of training, like what pe these people put their bodies through, like how they live, breathe, sweat, you know, die sometimes to like master a craft. I can respect that a hundred percent. Yeah, you can't knock it, like. If something, if somebody's going to dedicate themselves to something that they care so passionately for, I think it's almost like a level of like, hey, you're doing something I'm not. How can I knock it? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, um, you said millionaires throwing balls, yeah. but like, man, 
if I could ever throw a ball as accurately as those millionaires, uh, if I could do anything yeah. to the level that they throw balls, I'd probably also be a millionaire because I would, like, yeah. that's just, like, they've refined something to such a degree mm-hmm. that it's, like, nearly superhuman, you know? And I find that really interesting. There's a lyric. It's, it's weird because it's a lyric in, like, a nonsensical part of the song, but it's, uh, like... I. It's part of, uh, it's not, but the, is it, but the nuns are still watching? No, it's, um, things that rhyme with orange by, I set my friends on fire. Mm. And it's like, I like the way I'm doing it better than the way you're not. Mm. And, oh yeah. Like, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, like just something simple like that is like, it's a, almost an inverse of that, of what we just spoke on. Like, hey, if somebody's going to hate on you for like, like you're doing something but they're not even doing it at all like you're like "Eh, but then you shouldn't do the same you're not doing something why should you like have any type of negativity towards that like just being like letting people just enjoy it (laughs) Yeah. like and knowing there's i feel like almost in any industry there's a problem yeah, right sports absolutely. industry music industry yep. you know we got a lot of stuff going on about streaming rights and everything still which streaming rights technically don't really exist at all like or regulations if you would um but like the game industry you know the whole it's like right now date this like bethesda dropping all those um developers and everything and then they set and then a week later after they do mass layoff they announce a new uh, spin off from uh from one of their other uh development teams, and it's like, why'd you lay everybody off then if you have the money to make a new studio <laughs> so and there's a there's problems, but I feel like people enjoying things like enjoying sports is probably one of the most beautiful things there is, especially when you when it brings so many people some fr- semblance of joy so let me do a great analogy that happened last night on this very topic, right? So, theology here was playing a show. It was a lot of fun. And the person who played before theology, there was several people in the group I was with that did not enjoy their music. And they kept talking, telling me about it. And I was like, yeah, but like, there's people dancing. There's people enjoying this. If this ain't your vibe, like, just wait. It's gonna change. We know the person that's playing next. We know we're gonna enjoy that. Like, <laughs> don't be on the dance floor just like go find like a seat somewhere and chat with your friends for a while like no one's forcing you to be here like interacting with this that's very true towards the end of their set um they started playing like a lot of break beats that i thought were incredible like no one plays break beats that's like probably the least played genre in like all of edm yeah break beats are sick yeah and they were playing these really good break beat songs i don't know anyways but well and the same thing happened at the the first feral dance event right we had a dj oh, yeah right yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and people were like oh why are they playing this like uh i'm, I'm not enjoying this i'm like cool like you see all the people up there dancing yeah, right. they like, they do right. enjoy it yeah <laughs> so was that who put on uh that slipknot track yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah. like like because me and mako were like oh snap slipknot <laughs> and we were like just like like and it's like kind of as what you say a lot in theology says don't stick in a box don't stay in the box and that was like it's like good more people are not doing it like i yeah and Hopkins like, is a super talented he's guy crazy doing, good. Yeah, yeah like like uh, like we went to a show of his last night and uh it was super fun and like what they're doing is super cool and like it's it's one of those things where it's like if it's ain't your jam that's fine but like don't don't knock it yeah right like you're just not the audience go find something else right yeah, yeah that happened last week two weekends ago two weekends ago at um zero like a friend was like oh this isn't what i expected cool yeah (laughs) like can't help you there but but i love that people i love that people that are on decks are feeling more and more comfortable expressing themselves right instead of just like i'm looking at you i want to make you move because yes that's a want it's a desire but i also want to be me yeah like that's and that's kind of like if i feel like there's a thematic tone to an event 
and I'm not able to like have a have my like free reigns I kind of don't want to do it <laughs> understandable and and that's why I try to like when I run events not like be super specific on like the tone of the event I try to make it pretty broad because I think that like when you try to get like uber specific it like takes away from some of the like creativity and artistry god i couldn't agree more this is the biggest reason that i left like quote unquote mainstream edm and i switched to doing vgm is because that's the first scene that i found where i can be as creative as possible and i can go from hard style to techno to mid-tempo bass back to house to trance to side trance i can do whatever i want and it's just accepted right um i did want to talk about this concept as well which relates to this of I heard this on a, a YouTube video recently. Uh, the guy was talking about how back in the day when you made YouTube videos, you had to stand out to be discovered. And now, because everyone and their mother is on these social media platforms, you have to fit in with the herd to be discovered. You have to do what everyone else is doing to be discovered. And I think that's yeah, yeah. And I think that's super interesting. And I refuse to conform to that. And I'm just going to keep doing me. And hopefully that pays off in the long run. But yeah, when when that guy put it that way, I was like, Oh, yeah, that's why everybody's copying the same TikTok trends. And, you know, because there's this I, and, you know, I hate to sound cliche, but capitalism ruins art, right? And so when everybody's trying to make money off of making these videos, right, you know, they start making the same types of things and they'll even start making stuff that they don't even like, but it pays so they do it, right? And that's that's never where I want to be personally as a as a content creator and an artist, right? I think that's very dangerous territory to get into, but it's really tempting, you know, when you're seeing your numbers tank and... You're like, well, I'm not going to make any money, you know? Well, and I even see ads on, like, YouTube that people are like, if you follow our formula, you will get X amount of views. And I'm like, yeah, how about no? <laughs> I know, right? Because then you're just, like, conforming to what society is doing. And, and, and back to what you were saying about your shows that you throw, I really appreciate that you do it that way because there's something for everybody then, right? Like, you know, we went from... Jesus playing, you know, like deep in big room house, which was incredible. I love his sets to me playing video game music, trance house, dubstep, rhythm, drum and bass, everything to options, throwing down like really hard dubstep and even metal, like the Slipknot track, right? And then to Eve playing, yeah, break beats at the end. Oh, dude, it was so glorious. Like you heard everything. And I just, I love that. The only genre, and this is because I'm biased, that I could just only play would be like bass trance, right? If I had to pick a genre to only play, but even then I would be missing like, oh, I want I want to throw in some dubstep. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know why audiences in EDM have classically conditioned themselves to just expect one genre. I think that's dumb, and I'm glad we're breaking that mold here in the Twin Cities. Yeah, multi-genre yeah. shows is where it's at. Absolutely. I, I want to experience something new. Yeah. Like, ideally... I would like to understand the concept behind something like at a high level. So I know that like, oh, this is going to be like totally not my thing because it's, you know, that meditative like flow trance mm -hmm. kind of event where people are going to be very, I don't know, the the, the hippie element that yeah. some EDM shows have that I, I'm not, this is not my scene. Right. But like, I don't know how I can find new things if I go to a show and it's just all the same, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. That's why there's so many festivals that I do not do, but <laughs> because like it's it's like cool. I like this genre. I spun this genre. I put mixes out, but I don't want three days of just this genre. Oh, yes. And like that's like I think what you said about the last Pharaoh. You were like, hey, this is a bass show bass is everywhere yeah. it doesn't define yeah, like right. oh this is dubstep oh this is rhythm it's it, what doesn't have bass right literally every genre has bass in it so yeah there you go and if it doesn't have bass that's i mean it might weird. be like a, a <laughs> piano ballad yeah 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 but even even that has bass frequencies let's go straight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah like it's um I, I love that that's actually happening so thank you again <laughs> because 
like I said, that expression. I'm like, uh, and it's it's so weird because like you know when I played a side trans show, um, vibe with people that are side trans, but then they're like, that's all they want to listen. That's all they want to experience, and that's that's it. And I'm like, what? Do do you ever itch for something more? It's it's yeah. then it's. I find it fascinating, <laughs> really. Well, and that's why I'm so excited for Electric Forest coming up in a few weeks here. Oh yeah, like, dude! I'm so forest, sad I can't come with you. Ugh. Yeah, it would have been fun. Yeah. But uh, like, Forest is one of the most diverse like festivals in the country, and like. I'm excited for some just like wildly different music, right? And like how they have multiple different stages that have completely different concepts and like they're all about that variety and like you show, like some of their like pretty lights is one of their headliners and then also it's like excision. Yeah. Right. Very different. <laughs> Very different. different. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. I love taking the flyers of a of like electric forest of any variety festival and if there's an artist you don't know i'll go on like say beatport youtube whatever and and usually just those artists and that are smaller print towards the bottom of the of the bill and look them up get the like discover stuff i may not be able to go but i can still learn about these other people and drive on my own like if i was going to take the time to fly out or go i can take the time to just look it up and listen (laughs) well and it's why i love like going early to shows like a lot of people like oh we don't need to show up because the person we're going to see ain't gonna play until midnight and i'm like yeah but i kind of want to like check out these small local openers that they have you know yeah or even non-locals i went to excision alien park took the show for me oh actually this girl that played before excision took the show for me i was like yeah both of you that's awesome not like not expected Mm -hmm. went to meshuga and uh in flames took it like but sugar was dope it was amazing but in flames took it and then um go to like another death core show we i think we went to see like rivers of nile and alter beast played and that guy's stage presence like kind of reminds me of you uh, theology like awesome. like just like in it all the way in it and we're like nope that that's it. It, it, that that won it, and then the headliner came on who we came to see, and we're like, nope, that guy's still the best. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. The number of times an opener has just like stolen a show for me is crazy, and like, I, like I've been at shows at like eight p.m. Right, like that are going till two a.m. and no one's there. There's like five people on the dance floor, and just someone's going just absolutely just nuts on the decks, and I'm just like, oh my god! Like everyone else missed the best part of this show. <laughs> See, that's what I love about uh, like the bass scene is that that's allowed. Like in the in the trance scene, at least when I was like growing up in it, the openers were like made to play boring music because the headliner had to look good. Right. And I hated that. I always hated that. I was like, I'd rather just listen to good music all night instead of like boring stuff. And then the headliners, good music. That's dumb. I don't know. No, I think that too. Cause I feel like when I first started like getting into mixing and just doing even like smaller shows with other people, a big factor was like, Hey, <laughs> don't play this track or this track or this track. Or if you're not up first or early, hope they don't play it so you're not playing them. it's like just bring your whole library just vibe with it like even if you play the whole track you might put another spin on it that other people don't do like like don't worry about it just flow with it right. and but like there was that pressure of like hey you can't do you can't play the same track twice i'm like well technically i'm not playing the same track twice (laughs) yeah dj yeah yeah i i I now have like four different remixes of the me channel theme right and they're all different right but like every time i drop it everyone goes like they love it you know and uh but i have four different ways to do it so yeah anyways well and that's i think one of the cool things about edm right is like you can play the exact same song and mix in different elements and like it, it'll be a completely different experience. Yeah. yeah. Like when T so last night dropped that Sandstorm remix, yeah. that was so good. Yeah. Like, yeah. And typically, you know, when you hear Sandstorm, it's kind of like you know. I don't know, it's like kind of a joke, right? Yeah. Cause it's like 
the EDM song. Every, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like everybody knows that. Right. And, uh, yeah, just the different spin that was put on it was so cool. Right. Um, Sandstorm does go hard though. And I don't know why, I don't know why, like I was thinking about this last night, like nobody has copied that sound design. I've never heard that outside of Sandstorm. Just a thought. <laughs> like think of it, like you, you cannot think of a song right now that has the Soundstorm like sound design. There isn't one. Well, that focus is on that, like being the melon. That's fair. I've yeah. never heard one. Anyways. That, well, I mean, with it being the focus, that really, I know I've been around, but like, it's not the emphasis on the, yeah, yeah the focal point of the song. You're right. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> now I'm going to be on a mission tonight. I'm like, yeah. I need answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think we've been gabbing for a while now. Is there anything else that's on your guys' minds that we can discuss before? I just want to give you opportunity. Okay. Yeah. July 27th, we're having a show at the uptown vfw yes. that's gonna be video game and anime music so like come out and check it out it'll be dope what is the lineup it's love letters from amsterdam devin key who else me cool i'm glad to know that and then 808 so it'll be a fun night we're, we're pumped we, so. we will have a monthly residency uh at the uptown vfw so we're gonna be having a lot of shows coming up so yep, yep. so come out it's honestly one of the cheapest ticket prices for any any events ten dollars if you buy yeah. it ahead of time fifteen dollars if you uh are lazy and buy it at the door right and uh the drinks are super cheap at the uptown vfw so you slim on it yeah you. right no so you also save money there but anywho all right cool anything else you want to say my good friend jason um one thanks for having me thanks yeah, for having us it's yeah. always lovely seeing y'all and uh uh, just uh, be safe, be well, and be kind to each other. Absolutely. All right. Well, guys, thank you for listening to this edition of The Quest Within. Take care of each other.